Do you know why most major banks no longer use uniform security? Well, one of the main reasons that that practice stopped several years ago, it was because those intent on robbing the bank had decided that's our resistance. It's easily identifiable. So we'll just take that out from the beginning. It was very costly for the security guards and it was very tragic for the banks. What that tells us is something that's very interesting when we lead into the conversation of open carry versus concealed. I want to be very clear as we start this conversation that I am very thankful that we have the right to open carry. I believe that it should be legal and I absolutely think the Second Amendment covers open carry for law-abiding citizens. However, I cannot say that I am 100% in favor of the practice when it comes to logic and tactics. And here's why. First and foremost, in the open carry world, it is often the person who open carries who causes the tensions to rise in certain situations. If you go into the big city or go into any city for that matter, carrying a firearm, especially a long gun, but even a handgun in a position uh, where it is easily seen, there are going to be questions. There are going to be interactions. There are going to be tensions rising. It's just bringing undue argumentative behavior into the gun world. Law enforcement, if they're worth their salt, they're going to get out and talk with you. They may not understand why you're carrying it, and they definitely will be within their rights to at least find out if you are an issue. Why? Because of active shooters, because of people who do have ill intent. And so it complicates things for you and for the rest of the gun community. It makes the gun community look as if we are trying to cause issues or to have some type of debate. The public place is just not the platform for that debate to happen. When the Constitution was written, that debate was had. The Second Amendment is etched in stone. So why do we want to push those buttons? Why do we want to antagonize the community that is already either on the fence or anti. It just doesn't make good sense. For some of us in the gun community who have worked on the law enforcement side, the security side, and we have been in the firearms instruction side with the civilian world, we are constantly being asked these questions and it really brings undue attention and arguments to the table. They're just not necessary. Carrying open doesn't really make you any more prepared. In fact, if the bad guy sees that you have a firearm, most likely you're the first target. Police and security who wear uniforms, why shouldn't they be concealed? And some of them are, but the first level of force is present. That is a big reason why there are uniforms on our law enforcement officers. It is to be able to identify them. It's professionalism. It is a force presence. When we see that uniform, when we see that gun belt, we automatically know these people are here to protect, these people are here to serve, these people are here to stand between the civilian and those who have ill intent. Another thing in the open carry world that is a constant question mark for me is the bad habits in the way they carry. Most of the time, it is pretty obvious that they do not have any type of training and most likely have not got the self-awareness and the situational awareness to provide retention for that firearm. The reason that law enforcement and security are required in many cases to carry retention holsters is because you don't have eyes in the back of your head. And no matter how alert and situationally aware you are, there is always the possibility of someone sneaking up and getting their hands on the gun. Law enforcement officers that have trained all their lives to retain their firearms lose their firearms. So much more the guy that's 150 pounds overweight wearing a Lorsen 380 
in a Uncle Mike's holster without the strap snapped, he's probably not going to retain that firearm if he gets in a fight with a guy that's high on meth. And most interactions with a bad guy, they're under the influence of something. So here's what I'm trying to say. I'm not against open carry. I think there's a time and a place for it. And that leads me to this point. In the concealed carry world, there are many people who conceal carry, but they project that they're carrying. Most of us know if we are attentive at all, we can spot the carriers in Walmart or at the mall or in the local restaurant. At least we can get close. However, some people just make it so obvious by the way they carry themselves, the way they dress, when they wear a t-shirt that's three times too small and try to conceal with that, uh, that's the same as open carry in my mind. It just doesn't do the job. There's too many things at our disposal. There's too many holsters. There's too many belt systems. There's too many companies that are making clothes specifically for concealed carry. While I don't believe in the requirement for everyone to have to go through a training course, I do believe that if we are to be proficient, we should. I mean, fire departments go to schools and teach little kids how to put themselves out if they're on fire, how to respond if their house catches on fire, how to use a fire extinguisher even in some cases for the older kids. But yet we completely go away from the fact that from a, a childhood, we're, we're not taught how to defend ourselves with a firearm. We're not taught that. Even though we might be able to shoot, we may be great marksmen, we may be great hunters, we may be good target shooters, there's a lot more elements involved in defending yourself with a firearm than just having one. You have that right. I thank God that we have that right, and I hope that right continues in our country. But don't be one of the ones who cause problems for the gun community by being ignorant, by being flamboyant, by being in your face. There's arguments that have to be had. There's debates that must occur. There's legal battles that have to be fought. And there's a line we have to stand on. But let's don't pour gasoline on the fire by being stupid. We do live in a world that still has a Second Amendment. And I don't think you should depend on law enforcement to bail you out of every situation you potentially will be in. Don't give the anti-gun world the ammunition they need to take away our God-given rights. I'm the Packin' Pastor. I want you to subscribe, like, hit the alert bell, share this with your friends. We're on YouTube, we're on X, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're on TikTok. And by the way, go shoot today.